Good morning, men, men and women of Christ. Back with you with another uh, spirit that teaching. Part two of the flesh is the imitation of the spirit. The flesh is the imitation of the spirit. And in 1 Corinthians 2.14, not 1 Corinthians 2.14, in uh, 1 Corinthians 15.22, it says in Adam all die, but in Christ shall all be made alive. Adam is the first state that we're born into. When we're born into this world in the flesh, we're in a state of death in Adam, in the spirit that's under the law. And we only escape spiritual death, which is eternal destruction. We only escape spiritual death through being born of the spirit. It can't happen through church. It can't happen through faith in scripture. Christ alone is the author of that work. It has to come through being born of the Spirit. When we're born of the Spirit and the work of the cross is applied to us, we're first dead to sin, spiritually dead to sin because sin is spiritual. Then we're alive unto God through Christ. We're alive unto God in Christ. Then we, then we connect, we become one with God through the image of Christ because Christ is the image of God. That means he's the revelation of God. He's the face of God. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 2 Corinthians 4, 6 and 7. 6 says, for we have this treasure, this eternal treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God, not of us. 7 says, for he has commanded the light to shine out of darkness, and has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Well, if the knowledge of God comes through the face of Jesus Christ, then Jesus Christ is the face of God. Jesus Christ is the face of God. How do you see the face of God? You see the face of, of the Spirit through revelation of the Spirit. Because now we see him through the revelation of him. Which means we see him through the knowledge of him. Once we're out of these physical temples in his presence, then we'll see him already knowing him. Already knowing him. Remember what it says in 1 John, for as he is, so are we in this world. And what that means is as he is in the spirit at present, so are we in this world by the fruit of the spirit. Because he's our spirituality. Once we're in him, he goes through the process of once again living through us so that we can experience divine living, the Christ life, which is a gift to us. So the flesh is, a, is the imitation of the spirit. And only once you're alive in Christ can you discern between the flesh acting spiritual and, and you being spiritual. Can you discern between the flesh acting saved and you being saved? Can you discern between the flesh acting like a man and being a man, discern between the flesh acting like a woman and being a woman. Remember that the male, the male is the shell of the man and the female the shell of the woman. And we don't enter back into true relationships until we're back in our original state. Until we're back in our original state. We, we can't have relationships according to the flesh. Relationships have to be according to the spirit. Real relationships have to be according to the spirit. We can have in the flesh what we may call relationships, but they're not true relationships because they're not coming out of that our original state of being. Out of our original state of living. In Adam, we all exist. In Christ, we all live. Let us go to part two of this spirit led teaching uh, Romans 8 5 Romans 8 5 through 14 5 5 says for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh and they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit this is what we were uh, studying upon in part 1 of this teaching they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. They that are after the spirit, the spirit. They that are of the flesh are earthy. They that are of the spirit are heavenly. They that are of the flesh 
they're limited to the things of the flesh. They're in the, imit the imitation of the spirit. They that are they that are in Christ, their mind is on the things of the spirit. They're in their original state of being. They're in their original state of being. They're heavenly minded. They're spiritually minded. They're, they're spiritually minded. For to be carnally minded is death. It's death. Because in Adam all die. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because in Christ we're all made alive unto God. It's life and peace. Seven, because the carnal mind is the enemy of God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Neither indeed can be. The carnal mind. Not the natural mind, but the carnal mind. When you're alive in Christ, but you're not yet like Christ, so it's easy to conform back to the same pattern. That's carnal. For the carnal mind is the enemy of God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. If you're in the flesh, you can't please God because you're not in Christ. You're not, you're not operating out of your original position. Once we're in Christ, we're in God. But the only way to have intimacy with God is through the image of Christ. So we have to be restored. And once restored back to the image of Christ, then the Godhead through the image will come to the soul and the body by the fruit of the Spirit. <clears throat> It'll be evident of our walk. It'll be evident of our walk with Him. Once it manifests in the flesh by the fruit of the Spirit, our salvation becomes evident to all. And then you, you can warn people. And not only warn people, but the ability of Christ in you, you're able to teach people what was the purpose of church And now being in the gospel, the purpose of going from church to the gospel, where in church, when we were all in Adam, we made a profession of faith. But in Christ, we're made alive by salvation by faith. Remember, even with that profession of faith in church, which we all had, we all went to the front of the church and made Jesus Lord and Savior of our life, which was not a true profession because Jesus is not Savior, but we didn't know any better. And we made that profession of faith and made Jesus Lord Savior of our life. Remember, we made him Lord and Savior of our life, of a life we didn't even have. But we didn't know any better. So when we go from salvation, uh, from uh, profession of faith to the gospel, which is salvation by faith, then we know better. Then we know the difference. And we can warn people. We can warn people. You can't have dominion in church. In church, you only have control. Uh, you, or you're under somebody's control. But in Christ, you're in dominion. You're in dominion. And, and you can live in dominion over the flesh as we as spiritual men and women live free from the flesh. When it's all over, this flesh is going back to the earth from where it came and the spiritual man and woman is going back to the Lord from which we came. When, when you're at a funeral and they're putting that body in the ground, they're putting that body back in the earth, that body came from the earth. That's the flesh. That's the form of the spirit. What came from Christ is going back to Christ. That's our spirit. We have to separate. Uh, we have to separate. Discern the difference between our soul and our spirit because when we're spiritually dead we're operating we know we have a soul but we think our soul is our spirit we have to separate what goes back to the earth and what goes back to God and you better go back to him in Christ you better go back to him in Christ so then they that in the flesh cannot please God you can't please him because you can't walk with him and God is not flesh, he's spirit. Nine, 
but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's not of his. So we see here that the spirit of God is the spirit of Christ. 10. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. We had to die to sin. We can't be in Christ in sin. We can only be in Christ once we're dead to sin. The only thing you can have in sin is church. But you can't have the gospel in sin. You can follow scripture in sin. You can be in church in sin. You can be a church member in sin. But you can't be in the gospel in sin. This is why we have to separate the flesh from the spirit. The imitation uh, of the spirit from the spirit. The flesh is the imitation of life. But the flesh is not life. Why is it the imitation of life? Because the flesh is the imitation of the spirit. The flesh is the imitation of the spirit. And if Christ be in you, once again, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. It's talking about the physical body. But if the spirit of him, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he shall also quicken, that's to make alive, your mortal bodies, that's your physical bodies, by his spirit that dwells in you. Remember in... Uh, in part 1 of 1 Corinthians 15 44, it talks about having a natural body and a spiritual body. This is talking about the spiritual body. Why is it talking about having a natural body and a spiritual body? The mind of the flesh is in a temple of the flesh. Well, when we leave these temples, these physical temples, the mind of our spirit, the mind of the soul, which is your spirit, is going to be in a body. We are spirit, soul, and body. When we leave this physical body, we are going to our eternal body. And that eternal body is designed for destruction or to spend eternity with God in Christ. With God in Christ. 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh remember in Adam all died not to the flesh to live after the flesh but what after the spirit because in Christ shall all be made alive for if we live after the flesh we shall die we're going to die in Adam we're going to die in Adam if we live after the flesh we shall die but if we through the spirit do mortify that's to put the deeds of the put to death the deeds of the body you shall live. You're going to live under God through the Spirit, which is Christ. Which is Christ. 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Doesn't matter if you're man or woman in the Spirit, or male or female in the flesh, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. They are the sons of God. So we have to go from childhood, Romans 8, 8, uh, Romans 8, 16, the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God to sonship. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. To being born of the spirit, we're in Christ. Once we enter into sonship, that means we're being led of Christ. Okay, and from, from sonship, we, we go into, uh, we go into Ephesians 4, 15 which is the head, which is Christ. We grow up into the head, which is Christ. That's spiritual maturity. That is spiritual maturity. That's the head. That's all things that pertains unto life. That's being alive in Christ and living. That's our spirituality being experienced as Christ lives through us. Because the Christ life is a gift to us. The Christ life is a gift to us. And there's no life like the Christ life. There's no life like the Christ life. There's, no, there's nothing like being back in that original state of living. Where you can know the difference between living and existing. 
between being in the joy, the joy of the Lord and outside of Christ, just enjoying yourself. There's a difference. There's a major, major difference. To enjoy life, to enjoy the Christ life is a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. We have to be back in our original state of living and stop just existing in Adam because that's where many will die, right in Adam. Right in church is where many are going to lose their soul. And this brings us to a conclusion of part two of this teaching. Brings us to a conclusion of part two of this teaching. And uh, I'll be back with you with part three. Love you with the love of Christ.